sports broadcaster, model, producer, writer, trailblazer. When it comes to Jane Kennedy, the list goes on and on. Before the Super Bowl on Sunday, CBS will air a special You Are Looking Live, a look back at the history of the NFL today. And I had a chance to sit down with Jane to talk about her career, including her groundbreaking turn as an anchor on the famous sports show. I am here with the lovely and talented Miss Jane Kennedy Overton. Jane, it's so wonderful to have you here and just have this conversation with you today. Well, thank you, Pat. It's been long overdue. We've long known each other overdue. for many, many years, right? Indeed. I don't even dare to guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, they're going to get an idea when we tell our viewers exactly why yes. we're having this conversation today. In particular, you're going to be featured um, in the Super Bowl, actually the pregame show yes. before the Super Bowl, which will air Sunday at 1 p.m. And there's a reason for that, because Jane Kennedy was part of that pregame, and that was a big deal back in 1978. You are a trailblazer. What, what does it feel like now to be profiled before such a huge audience? Um, I mean, we were the number one show. We were the number one broadcast show back then in sports. So, you know, the, um, the fact that um, to be able to be on a show like that when I had no experience in sports broadcasting before was really kind of surreal. Um, the fact that I was able to do an interview and actually get the job was surreal. Um, the fact that I kept the job was surreal. So all of it, you know, and, and millions and millions of viewers, you know, that watched the show, um, it was just mind-blowing at that particular time in my life. Um, oh. But those numbers have graduated so much since then. That's what I mean. You're going to be seen. Let's take in not just the uh, linear, the broadcast service, but our streaming platforms. Yes. All over the yes. world. So yes. probably the largest audience that... Um, you know, has ever been witnessed for a pregame show, I would imagine. <laughs> uh, perhaps. Um, and CBS has four hours of broadcast time before the game, mm -hmm. um, which is the NFL Today. And You Are Looking Live, which is, is the show that I took part in, will be airing before the actual NFL Today broadcast. And that will be with me and Brent Musburger. Oh, okay. We have to go back then to how yes. you started. And... It's such a beautiful story to me, and also one that you will, I'm sure you're gonna give us some, some inside information where some parts may not have been so beautiful. It rarely is for a trailblazer like yourself. Tell me what happened when you mentioned that, you know, I hadn't been a sports reporter before, because I think that's the first question I asked you. Oh, Jane, where did you report for sports? And you mm -hmm. said, well, I didn't. I didn't. So I want you to take it up from there. Well, I had always loved sports. Mm -hmm. um, ever since I was a kid, my dad was into sports. Um, and you may not remember, but there was a, a, um, a fighter called Haystack Muldoon. Oh, yes, I did. And Coco Brazil, <laughs> boxer, you know, yeah. the boxers. And that's what I was brought up on, you know. <laughs> and my dad played um, softball um, for one for his church, and then he played baseball for his team company. And we would go, I have four sisters, and so we would go to all the games and we were his cheer squad. <laughs> so, I mean, sports was something that was in our, in our blood. And then that was all pre-Title IX. Exactly. So there were no sports programs for women at that particular point. Um, but I just wanted to be anywhere near it, so I became a cheerleader. Mm -hmm. And then when the track team got ready to go off, they didn't have cheerleaders, so I became a statistician. But, you know, sports was just something that I always loved. And I loved when you mentioned, uh, you talked about being a statistician. So you knew actual, you knew all the technicalities uh, when it came to football. It's not like you had to learn it when you were on that show. You knew all that before. Well, I know a lot of it, but I did not know all of it. And part of the heart, probably the hardest part, mm -hmm was actually being on camera. I had done live television before, but you know, like, I mean, you see, I came in here today and I'm looking at the studio, which is so far more advanced than the studio uh -huh. that we had mm -hmm. at, um, in, in, um, in New York. But um, the technology was just mind blowing. The fact that you would be on air all day broadcasting to so many games and you would do a pregame show for, let's say, um, Florida and DC and Detroit. 
and then you would have another pregame show to do for the Midwest, and then you'd have another pregame show to do for the East, for the West Coast. And then when you got to halftimes of each of those games, many times those did not link up. So you'd be in the middle of a halftime show to the Dolphins, but then you've got <laughs> Chicago coming in and they're saying, okay, now we're getting ready to start our show. Uh -huh. And so just the, the technology I was not familiar with. Um, the fact that you know they were playing sports football um, was something that I absolutely loved, but I can't say that I was an expert at that in any way. I, to this day, I probably am. I most likely am not, but I love it, you know, and it's a game that I know well, and I know so many of the players, and I think that that was probably one of the major pluses for me um, back in the 1970s. Me being in Hollywood, and I had been in Hollywood for seven years before I actually started on the NFL Today, and so I was around a lot of these players because a lot of them always came to L.A., and um, you know, so the fact that um, I was a friend with Muhammad Ali did not <laughs> go to waste. Okay. Um, he helped me get the show, actually. Oh, well, I want to hear about yeah. that. So, yeah, and by the way, you were Miss Ohio. Yes, I was. Before you became an announcer on the pregame my, show. My mother took my picture and sent it into the newspaper. <laughs> I Which, didn't apply. <laughs> well, well my, and you should have been, my God. I mean, just gorgeous, as gorgeous as you are now. Oh, thank you. Thank but you, thank I'm you. sure <laughs> that would be an addition to you getting um, the, the, uh, the gig. But I know it was a lot more than that because I want you to share what you, you talked to me about. You knew Muhammad Ali, but you also had to go in for the interview. Yes, absolutely. Um, they had interviewed so many people across the United States for this particular job to replace Phyllis George. Mm -hmm. And um, so everybody knew that there was an opening. And I think they had um, actually 78 people they had brought in for the finals. And then they narrowed that down to only 16 that they took to New York. And of that 16, you know, I, I got ready and I had, uh, I said, well, you know, like I'd been in auditions where you go in and you, you read for, you know, a script or a movie and, mm -hmm. you know, they don't know you. They don't even give you time of day. You know, they, okay, take your headshot and then next. And they, <laughs> so I didn't know what kind of audition or what kind of time I would have. And so I, I, um, any. I went to uh, Las Vegas. Don King was having um, the Don King Sportsman Ball. Uh -huh. And I got an interview on VHS with Minnesota Fats, um, Julia Serving, um, Don King. And I tucked that under my arm and I went off to New York and I said, if I never get a chance to actually audition, I'm going to leave my tape with them. <laughs> so I had a tape. Um, but when I got there, you know, and all the girls had blonde hair. Okay. And I said, well, they're definitely not looking for someone like me. My agent had refused to submit me because he, he just said didn't they think you had a chance. No, no. Just because you were black. Perhaps. Okay. Yes. But why do you think he did that? Um, they said three times I asked to be submitted. Three times they submitted a list of ten, and three times they were all turned down. All right. And um, he said they don't want a black girl. They don't want anyone that's not a journalist. But I knew a lot of the women that were auditioning who were not journalists. So okay. those reasons were not, they didn't hold up. So when I got there, um, and I had called a friend the night before because they didn't let us know who would be, we would be interviewing on set. Um, they were interviewing um, for five minutes, an athlete, uh, repartee with Brent um, on camera for five minutes and then reading teleprompter copy for five minutes. That was the audition. Mm -hmm. And so when I got there, um, I didn't know this guy that I was going to be interviewing. And so the night before, I called my friend and I said, do you know anything about him? He said, well, it doesn't matter who he is. What matters is how you do. He says, do you believe in yourself? He says, and the one thing that you have to overcome, Jane, is you're intimidating. He said, so if you can, <laughs> which was news to me. <laughs> <laughs> that you were intimidating? <laughs> well, I, you, I mean, you a know. A beautiful woman with a brain. That <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, there, see, I it. I didn't it. see it that way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so anyway, um, uh, he said, you have to just let him know um, that you're just another person. You have to become friends with him. Okay. So before we actually started the audition, I'd seen a backgammon game in the corner. So I asked the guy, I said, you play backgammon? He said, yeah. So we sat and played for like a half an hour. 
See, when we smart. went on camera, we were like old friends. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we was like, oh man, okay, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that, you yeah. know? And so, and Brent stood up and he just walked off the set. He didn't even interview the rest of the girls. He said, it's Jane or nobody. Brent Musburger. Brent Musburger. Wow. He said, she has something, she has that thing that we need. That thing that we need, she can relate to the players. The players can relate to her. That's that's brilliant, Jane. Just, I mean, think, think about that. Yeah. I think in most people today, sometimes you don't have an opportunity to do that, obviously, especially in news. But in a sense of, of having an interview like that, um, sight unseen, mm -hmm. you know, you found something in common with this. Uh, you said it was a strong safety. Strong safety. And so he saw the interview. He saw me interviewing Clyde. And said, Clyde Powers. Okay. He saw me do the interview and he had done the on camera with me and he had seen me do the five minutes of teleprompter copy. And so he just walked away. He <laughs> said, It's Jane or nobody. <laughs> but they still wouldn't hire me because they were afraid that it would be two blacks on the show and one white. The other um, Earth Cross. Earth Cross. So, they, so what happened? You said they still didn't hire you. They sent my tape, my audition tape, to the Southern Affiliates mm -hmm. because they thought they would pull out. And um, the Southern Affiliates came up with the idea that, well, we already have Jimmy the Greek sitting over here, so why don't we put him on the desk and that will be two whites and two black. So that's how that worked out. That's how that worked out. Well, but some... they still only gave me six weeks. Okay. You made the audition, you made the cut, but then you had another six weeks to prove yourself or yes. to see how people would receive you. Is that it? Yes. Mm -hmm. it was, uh, it, they didn't give me the whole year. They only gave me a six-week trial period. Well, how would you feel about that? I resented it, but, you know, that was never going to stop me. I'd been in Hollywood long enough to know that you get turned down way more times than mm -hmm. you get picked. Okay. And so I was, I was hey, it didn't faze me anymore. It, I just said, you know, you put one foot in front of the other and you keep going. So, but after the six weeks, then you were still there. I didn't have to wait six weeks. Ah, my all right, tell me about that. Okay. <laughs> my second week there, um, I was in the office and I overheard the people at Sports Spectacular um, talking about they wanted the Muhammad Ali post-fight interview. And Muhammad was um, fighting Leon Spinks in New Orleans. I remember that. Friday night. Uh -huh. I just said, I can get you the interview. <laughs> And they said, I don't know you why can? I said that. I don't know why I said that, but I did. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why they put me on a private jet and they believed me. <laughs> <laughs> but you did it. I went to New Orleans. I got the fight interview, post fight interview. Um, I came back to New York. I gave the piece to Sports Spectacular on Saturday. And they clipped a piece for me for my Sunday show on the NFL Today. And Monday morning, I got a call from CBS. They picked up my contract for the year. I used to watch, and I must say, um, besides just like, oh my God, she's so gorgeous, and she knows what she's doing. I thought it was enjoyable. I thought it was very pleasant. It was great working with Irv. It was great working with Brent. I just had fun. I just, you know, like every day I went to work thinking that this is probably the most fun that I'm ever gonna have, because I totally enjoyed it. I was just all in. And um, I mean, it was strenuous, it was difficult. I was living in Los Angeles, flying back and forth to New York every week. Oh, so you show. never moved to New York? I never did. Oh, all right, no. so that's, yeah, that in itself is, yeah. uh, you know, that, that's a heck of a schedule. It was. Jane, at the time, did you know how prolific your position was? Did you know that you were, you were making a place in history? No, I did not. Okay. Not at all. That's amazing. It was um, too fast. Oh, it happened too fast for you. It was, it was so fast that, um, I mean, you know, I was traveling so much that I really didn't have a personal life. Um, I wasn't around a lot of people. Mm -hmm. You know, I wasn't there to see people's reactions. I wasn't in conversations with people at parties or visiting at a friend's house. You know, I, I didn't see any of that. I was just working. So I did not know. Um, but um, there were so many thing that, things that happened in the aftermath that I have to sit back and I wonder, oh my God, I still can't, I still can't believe it. Even, even this moment, I still can't believe 
that all of that happened and that it was so significant, especially for African American women. Yes. Um, and I, I have people that tell me all the time, you're the reason that I did this. You're the reason that I went into broadcast. You know, I, I can see why it may not have hit you at that time and even maybe not like today. <laughs> I yeah. think you might realize it a little more. Yeah. You inspired a generation of women and in particular, women of color. In, in my mind, when we talk about the pioneers of, of television, sports, news, I always think of you. We were live. That was new. Mm -hmm. We were, I mean, we had reporters that did not like us just because we were live. Journalists had to wait till Monday for their stories to be told. And yours was but right But we there. were live, and that's why Brent would start the show with, you are looking live, mm -hmm. because that was a big thing back then. Mm -hmm. And that's why this special that's coming on is called, You Are Looking Live. I think it was on Instagram. Uh, a young man sent me a picture, and uh, I didn't know who he was. He said, look what I found today. And it was a picture of the Smithsonian Museum. Ah. When it first opened. Yes, in D.C. In Washington, D.C., the National Museum of African American History and mm -hmm. Culture. And it was a picture, and it was um, an, an exhibit called Television in the Media Landscape. And there was Don Cornelius, The Supremes, Nat King Cole, Diane Carroll, uh, Nichelle Nichols, and me. <laughs> And were you surprised? I was shocked. <laughs> I was shocked. And it was me at the desk of the NFL Today. How about that? And um, underneath it was a quote from Oprah Winfrey. And it said, we used to sit and watch TV and yell, colored people on TV, colored people on TV. Well, that's what the word was. Yeah. At that particular time. It was. In 78. Was. And, and that's very true. This way before, well, Diane Carroll, of course, all those names that you mentioned. Yes. But... I, it, it, you are always so, every time I, I, I see you, inspiring, but just so, I don't know if humble is the right word, but you're just so very approachable. And I think it's, it's to hear you say, no, I didn't know how significant Jane Kennedy was and Jane Kennedy is, but you really made a mark and really set the bar. What is Jane Kennedy doing now? Um, I've been writing, this is very interesting, I've been writing an autobiography called Plain Jane. <laughs> I started in 2000. I decided that it was going to be my living process piece because I did not want to um, write a book about one singular incident. I thought that they should know the whole me, and which would include my daughters. And so I decided to wait until after my daughters were grown. Uh -huh. And the book is written in four parts. And it's Jane Harrison, which is my maiden name. So who I was, Jane Kennedy, Hollywood life, mm -hmm. Hollywood wife, Jane Overton, my family with my girls, my daughters, how significant they are. Um, the reason that I've been gone for, what, 20 years, 25 years. Um, and um, plain Jane. So when you get to that point when your children are out of the house and they're well on their way, then who are you? You're no longer your parents' kid. You're no longer somebody's wife. You're no longer a mom. I mean, in, the, are, in, that, in, in that meaning of the word. Mm -hmm. But who are you? And so many women have faced that question. And I thought that that was really significant. So I wanted to be able to include that as part of my story. Did you get the title then or did yes, you did. wait? So you knew you were, it was going to be right plain away. Jane. I knew right away. Even though you weren't necessarily plain Jane at that time. I've always seen myself that way. Okay. I've always seen myself, I'm just Jane. You know, there might be dazzle and all of that stuff, you know, the Hollywood glare that, you know, all of the famous friends that travel abroad and all that, but it, it's always been just me. Lastly, I want to ask you, what do you want people to take away from this special that they're going to see Super Bowl Sunday? Um, you know what? Um, we had so much fun taping at Brent Musburger and I. Um, we went to New York and um, we, I'm, I'm sorry, um, we were here in L.A., okay? I, I don't know where I am. <laughs> <laughs> we were here in L.A. Um, I walked in the room and I mean, it was so good to see him, you know? We just gave big hugs, you know? And it was so nice to sit down. It was supposed to be like 20 minutes, right? And it ended up being two and a half hours. Wow. And we talked <laughs> about everything. So I really don't know what's going to be on the show. It profiles the entire history of the NFL today, mm -hmm. um, which I think was nine years. 
um, I was only there for two. So, you know, my part is just a little part of the story. Um, but um, it will be interesting. You'll see it as I will see it. I haven't seen it yet. So you'll learn what they thought was significant this, along with me. Well, your, your picture is certainly prominent with Brett Musburger as far as the advertisement is concerned. <laughs> We're going to look forward to your book and any other projects that you have going forward. Yes, there's um, two. Um, actually releasing next week mm -hmm. is Lamont McLemore, the founding member of the Fifth Dimension. Yes. He's a world-renowned photographer. He did most of the Jet Beauty, the and Beauty of the Weeks. He has a coffee table book launching on Valentine's Day, and uh, it will focus on a, a collection of many of the Jet Beauty, Beauty of the Weeks that he shot. Oh, beautiful. And um, I did the foreword. I did two essays of the four essays that are in the book. Lamont. We've been friends since day one, since I first oh. arrived in L.A. Oh. And then there's another uh, woman by the name of Bonnie Jill, mm -hmm. who is, I think, the first female recruiter in the NBA. And um, she's writing a book about women, first women in sports. And she included me with Billie Jean King and several others, which I think was a huge honor. Yes. And, and that book is launching next week as well. So, see, what, what do I want to say? Not necessarily a comeback, but yes. It is. It's a, it's, it's a full it circle is. moment for you, actually. Yes, absolutely. And I'm going to say that's going to start Sunday when everyone sees this special. It so. is. You are looking live <laughs> <laughs> at the NFL today. Oh, wonderful. Well, Jane, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. My pleasure, my pleasure oh, indeed. Wonderful I conversation. Love this. I love this, absolutely. Okay. I've well, been looking forward to this for a number of years. We'll have to do this again then. Yes, <laughs> definitely. Jane was certainly one of my favorites. For CBS News Los Angeles, I'm Pat Harvey.